Writer Vladimir Nikolaev is a veteran of the Belarusian opposition. He was imprisoned and suffered exile. Now he is optimistic about the protests against the re-election of Alexander Lukashenko and the resurgence of Belarusian culture and language. Russification during the Lukashenko years has been twice as intense as it was during the Soviet years, when there were Belarusian institutes and Belarusian culture and literature was developing anyway. Under this regime, all that disappeared. Belarusian is, along with Russian, the official language of Belarus. Despite this, its use is rare. There is only one newspaper that publishes daily in Belarusian. Under the scrutiny of Lukashenko government officials, its future looks uncertain. At the moment, our newspaper continues to appear, though we do not know if they will allow us to continue. They meet weekly for several hours to decide whether or not to allow us to publish, but it seems that the idea of closing the only newspaper in Belarusian would be too much. Preservation of the language also depends on the work of folk music groups like this one that is keeping alive traditional Belarusian songs. Now I see a trend, especially after these last few weeks, where I can hear how people start speaking Belarusian in stores. If you hear Belarusian on the street, it is surely a person with a higher education. Belarusians' desire to use their native language beyond folklore has given birth to a whole new cultural scene that includes the rock group Mutnea Voka. For young people here, a Belarusian alternative to Kremlin-sanctioned media. Belarusian state television broadcasts almost exclusively Russian channels, but young people and intelligent adults no longer watch them. They search everything on the internet or YouTube. Belarus is in the midst of change, and Lukashenko's opponents hope a cultural transformation will be part of the end of what they see as a long night of political oppression that has lasted for 26 years. For Ricardo Marquina in Minsk, I'm John Spear, VOA News.